Hello, everyone. I'm back after 10 days of COVID, after 10 days of being in bed and 10 days of God forcing me to take a retreat and a vacation. <laughs> I'm finally back and I survived COVID and I'm glad to be here. I missed you all. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the prayers that you have given me and for all the people who have prayed for me. I really, really appreciate it. And in this video, we're going to be talking a little bit about Advent and preparation and Jesus and his coming. I mean, think about it. We say, O come, O come, Emmanuel. We sing this song all the time. And yet, are we ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus? Are we ready for his coming in our life? If he was going to come today and we were going to stand before his infinite majesty, would we be ready? I had a lot of time to think and reflect and pray during COVID when I was quarantined in my bedroom for 10 days, not being able to see my wife, not being able to see my daughter, not being able to see anybody. And I just had to pray a lot and, you know, entertain myself a lot. But the reality is I got to thinking about how distracted we are in our culture, how distracted we are. I mean, if you're a flower and you're planted in the garden with other flowers and there's sunlight on you, you're going to grow. But if you're planted around weeds, there's a good chance that the weeds are actually going to overtake you and you are going to be surrounded by weeds and you're going to be squelched and choked and not grow properly. And that's how it is in our culture. I mean, I just am forced to take 10 days of silence and I just think of how much TV we watch and how much social media we scroll and how much Netflix we binge watch and how many video games we play, how many sports and hobbies we have, and how little we stop to take time to pray to God. Really good prayer time with God and to read the Bible and to read good spiritual reading and to reflect on it. And this is necessary. We're praying, come, O come, Emmanuel. We're asking Jesus to come, but many times we're not ready. And if we were going to stand before his infinite majesty, his infinite holiness with all of our sins, would we be ready? Listen to what the Bible says on this. This passage is taken from last Sunday's reading, and it was talking about kind of the end of the world type events. And it was talking about how the powers of heaven are going to be shaken and everyone's going to be scared. People are going to die for fear of what's to come. And Jesus says to make sure that your hearts do not get weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness in the cares of this world. Now, many people will be like, well, I don't get drunk. I'm fine. You know, I'm not being lazy. I'm fine. But the reality is, this is the scary part. It says, do not let your heart get weighed down with the cares of the world, the cares of this life. How many of us are overly stressed out about money, about jobs, about relationships, about this or that or another thing, and we're literally anxious about it. We're always thinking about it. It's taking up our whole life, and it's bringing us to a point where we're not at peace in our life. We don't have a great prayer life, and we're worried about the news. We watch the news all the time, and we're fearful about what's to come, and we get angry, and we get worried, and we stress out, and we're not forgiving people and we're backbiting and we're losing our temper. And Jesus says, don't get weighed down with the cares of this world. And this is difficult, especially if you're going through hard times. It's difficult. But the reality is, if we get weighed down with the cares of this world, the Bible says it's going to choke this spiritual life out of us. And we're not at peace anymore. We don't see God as loving. We don't have a thirst for the Eucharist anymore. And we lose that spirituality in us. It also says, don't get weighed down by dissipation. What is dissipation? If you look it up in the dictionary, it's a descent into drunkenness or sexual living. If we're having these sexual sins and we're not trying to overcome them, we're not fighting against them with all of our might, then we have weeds that are growing around us and choking the spiritual life out of us. We must never get tired of fighting against our addictions, against those things that do us harm and that attack us. We must do war against them and bring Christ into our battles to fight them with us. Also, dissipation means a squandering of resources, energy, and or money or other things like that. So it's a squandering of money. And it makes me think of the parable of the talents where Jesus has given us work to do on this earth. He's given us people to evangelize. He's given us a world to share the good news with. And many of us just keep it to ourselves. We put it under a bushel basket. We don't share our faith. We don't live our faith. At work, we hardly even, maybe people know we're Catholic, but we try to keep it to ourselves and we don't want it. And we squander the resources and the talents and the energy Christ gives us. And many times we squander it on other things. I already mentioned this, but how many minutes or hours do we pray 
every day compared to how much we watch TV or Netflix or entertain ourselves with video games or shopping or expensive vacations or many other things like this, even sc scrolling social media. Social media is not a bad thing, but if you're always scrolling social media and you're scrolling for hours and you don't have a prayer life, it is an idol in your life, which will keep you from heaven. Advent is about reflecting on our life. It's not as dark and depressing as Lent is and going out into the desert, but it is preparing for the coming of Christ. And if Christ said you are going to drop dead on Christmas Day before anyone even wakes up in the morning, you're going to die in your bed. And are you going to be ready? You're not going to get to celebrate with trees and presents and Christmas dinner and all the stuff that the world celebrates with. If you don't get to celebrate Christmas, are you preparing for the wrong thing with all the decorations and stuff? Again, these things are not bad. But if we're focusing all of our time and energy and resources on this and preparing for the day and family, but we're not preparing our hearts for eternity and we're not conforming our hearts to Christ, we're not giving up our own will and working on our sin, then what good is it? We're asking for Christ to come. Listen to what else it says. In verse 35, it says, but watch and pray at all times that you may have the strength to escape the things that are going to come and take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Wow, pray that you may have the strength to stand before the Son of Man. Think about that. Are you going to have the strength to stand before him on Judgment Day and not melt in your sins, in your guilt, in your fears? We need Christ in our life. We need to have a great, fantastic relationship, love relationship with Christ. And that's what Advent's all about. And I know from my own life that I am too busy and I get too busy and I get too caught up in the things of this world. And I am in the same boat everyone else is. And I'm going to be spending this Advent a lot more disconnected to my phone, a lot more disconnected to social media, a lot more disconnected to video games and shopping and just entertainment in general. And I'm going to try to take more silent time, more time for Jesus, more time for prayer, really good rosaries and not rushing through them. It's not just saying a rosary so we can get on with our day or getting it out of the way so we can get on with what's really important. I need to stop and pray like I've never prayed before. Pray as if every day is going to be my last. Pray as if God is right here with me and he wants that relationship with me. These are some of the things that we want to think about during Advent. Are you preparing for Christmas Day or are you preparing for Christ to be born in your life more? Are you preparing for family to come or are you preparing to go to heaven? Both are good. There is Martha and Mary and both are needed. But Mary, remember, Jesus said that Mary chose the greater portion because she just sat at the feet of Jesus and listened. And she didn't get caught up with the burdens of this life and the busyness of this life. And yes, sometimes we have to do that, but don't take too much time in the busyness and forget to take the time in the silence. And this is an intentional choice. It's going to be an intentional in order to choose to take time for Christ, to take time to pray, to take time to make time to read the Bible, make time to read the book, The Imitation of Christ, or Introduction to the Devout Life, or some awesome spiritual read where you could take one little passage a day and read it. Maybe make that an Advent thing. You know, take a spiritual book like The Imitation of Christ, read one little part. They're in little sections. Read a little section a day, meditate on it, and bring it with you throughout the rest of the day. Or read a page or two of Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales. Read a page or two a day, or do one of the meditations every day through Lent. And do that. Or do the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Do that through Advent. These will bring you closer to God for Christ. So what are you going to change this season? Think about it. Before you go to bed tonight, ask Jesus to open your eyes. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes. What do you need to change? What do you need to work on? What are you blind to? The Bible says that sin blinds us, which is why Matthew 5, 8 says it's the pure of heart who shall see God. If you don't see God, feel God, know God personally, you don't have a connection with God, there's a good chance that sin 
is blinding you and you need to make more room in your life for Christ. Thank you so much for watching this Advent video. I hope it was challenging and inspirational. And I ask you to help share it with others. We have a whole world who is not living for Christ. Please share this with others. And please like it and please comment. You know the deal. And please keep praying for us as we're always praying for you. If you would like to make a donation during this Christmas season, please check out our Patreon below or our PayPal below. If you would like to give us an end of the year donation or anything that can help us to save souls and change lives. We are only in business because of your charity. We only can do the work we do because of your charity. If you would like to tithe monthly to Catholic Truth so that we can do the work that God has appointed us to, please consider tithing to this most important work of God, the most important ministry where our world is dying and needs Catholic Truth. Check it out all down below. Thank you so much and God bless. Thank you.